evening. I'd like to call to order the um, meeting of the West Bend Community Memorial Library Board for Tuesday, April 20th. Um, may we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right. um, I'd like to call for a consent agenda, the approval of uh, approval of the meeting minutes. Wait up, uh, and the library board and the agenda. It's it's on there twice. That's okay. Because we were learning. Oh, <laughs> steam up. Cheaters steam up with that. Yeah. Well, same thing. So an approved. Separate approval of the agenda. Yes, I will. Second. Okay. We have an, a, a, a motion and a second to approve the agenda. I would like to make one notation. I would like to remove new business number F, moving the 2020 assets. And the reason being is there are some questions that we have with the city, so we want to investigate those before we talk about them. Um, so, can we amend the motion to remove that? Joanne? I, uh, yes, make a motion to approve uh, the agenda with the uh, removal of a of, uh, uh, new business item F. John? I'll still second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I'd like to ask for in a motion to approve to consent agenda for the approval of the meeting minutes of March 16th and also the uh, approval of the li library expenditures for March 2020. 2021. Sorry about that. I'll make a motion to approve. Jesse, do we have a second? A second. Go ahead, second. Okay. Um, I'm going to hold it up just for one second until I can pull it up. I had one, I did have a question on one of the, normally I, I asked ahead of time, but maybe I can Oh, I had a question. Why, uh, and then I realized what it was. That's why I didn't ask. Um, my question was on the elevators, but I think that's because of the basement. The, I mean, uh, there's like six, six or seven charges for the elevators. If I am not mistaken, the yeah we we installed a heater core and um, a heater core and electrical run that it has to have its own uh, specific run of electricity that runs the conduit through there. Okay. And this prevented the elevator to from going from to the to the lower level to the basement to warm the the oil. Uh, Something probably should have been in Wisconsin elevators all along. With, okay. You know, for, if you wanted to. So it was course. due due to that, not due to any maintenance or anything. I mean, a breakage. No. There's okay. No, no breakage. No, no breakage. No. Okay. We did have the. Did, did we not have the uh, tests as well? The the, uh, the tests might have been in there. There was a new rule from the state that we have to. I forget was it some kind of big testing that has to be done now on each elevator every year. We just found out about it, and then they just threw it in there. Yeah. Okay. So Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have a motion um, and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Financial reports. Mr. Joseph. Yes. Let me get. <laughs> um, there is nothing uh, too monumentous. Uh, we got some interest income again. That was about it. No checks went out of the unrestricted accounts. You got dollar sixty four cents. Ooh. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any questions for Joseph? If not, we will move on to number six, public comments. Okay. Um, number seven. This is a new one that I had said um, that I wanted 
to add to the board packet. It's kind of like our Library 101. Basically, for this month, I um, wanted to bring up Chapter 43. And basically, I'm not going to tell you about Chapter 43. I'm going to just give you a little bit of homework. In Chapter 43, which is the state statute that governs libraries, um, I'd like you to take this down and have a little homework assignment to go out and look at Chapter 43. Point fifty two, which is the definition of municipal libraries. It's not very much. It's a couple paragraphs that you just read. Then there's 43.7, which is municipal library board composition. It kind of talks about the board uh, members and some of their functions and roles. And the other one is 43.58, and that's the powers and duties of the board. So those are things that if you would read and we can talk about next month, um, I think that'll start us getting into a little bit. I know it's a little bit of ground zero for the library board, but it'll probably be good even as a refresher for me to start looking at. Is some. that in the trustee handbook? Pardon me? Is that in the trustee handbook or do we have to go online? You have to go, you, you sh there might be a copy. I'm not sure when you got the trustee handbook if you got a copy of it, but okay. Probably you've been on for a while, mm -hmm. so if you've got it, it's it has been updated. Okay. Okay. So you can get it online. All you do is search for Wisconsin State Statute 43, mm -hmm. and then you can pull it up. Okay. The other thing I'd like you also to take a look at is go online and search for the Wisconsin League of Municipalities. There are two statements, to the best of my knowledge, there's still two statements in that uh, document and it talks about libraries and basically it talks about what the board's power is and what the city re is responsibilities are. So if you could would be so kind as to look at that I'd appreciate that and then we can talk about that next month. I don't think there'll be that many questions. And then for next month's Library 101, what I'm thinking of doing since we're going to meet with Carrie on the budget and the carryover, I'm going to ask Carrie to come to the meeting and see if she could explain to us what the fund balance, or at the end of the year, if we have money in our budget that we haven't spent, how that's handled and dispersed back to us. So budgets, I think, are one of the things that I haven't gotten into as much as I should, and I think it would be good for the board to really get an understanding of the budget process. Any comments, questions? Anybody want to resign from the board because you don't have budgets? <laughs> oh. Bye, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> homework, homework. Okay. Um, Your budget is nothing compared to what we to The yeah. city budget, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> um, well, we, we could make it bigger, couldn't we? We, we tried. We tried. <laughs> We're going to keep trying, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, next one, a uh, number eight, library director's report. <laughs> I'm not going to rehash everything I wrote in there. It's, it's all about things that are going to come up in the, the future um, on the agenda. I did pass out the, the summary that uh, our uh, PR person from the city helped us put together. Um, pretty good start for that. And uh, that will be what we'll distribute this year. We might enhance it more for next year, but it's some good numbers. The other thing that um, I'd like to point out is on our website, there, there is the how many books we've circulated since 2000, and how many, what, what are the other numbers, Brad? I'm sorry. We've told how many items we have since the end of last month and the number of checkouts we've done to date this year. So, so those three numbers are going to be our regular rolling numbers, and we'll, we'll update that every month. Um, and keep in mind, this is down because of COVID. COVID. I would think we were closed for two months and yeah. people just weren't coming in. But I think this looks pretty good. We, we're, we're, we're doing good. Um, we have registered patrons of 40,000. What's the population of West Bend? About 33? 30, 31. 31? 31? Okay. So, so we got some of those outsiders. It's good. Yeah. Um, circulation, last the last month, uh, we were, 
we looked at our circulation and it's, it's starting to trend back towards normality of some sort. So I expect that that's going to uh, maybe not catch up to where we need to be for the, to be a 2019 kind of year, but it, it might get pretty darn close. So that's good news. Um, the staff are looking at a collection development tool called Edelweiss. I have to sing the song in my head <laughs> to say it right. Um, uh, so they'll be reporting on that in the future. Uh, Brad's been going nuts with our security system for the last couple weeks. Uh, it's been going off, beeping and such. So we, uh, we did replace the panel and all the keypads and we may have solved the problem today. I don't know, the, the guys have been there a lot, but uh, Brad, yeah, Brad's been putting in a lot of work overriding and, and uh, listening to all the beeps in the morning. Uh, had, I had BSI come in to do a look, look around uh, at some potential projects. They're looking at the boardroom AV and making some other quiet uh, large meeting rooms or space that we can divide and be flexible with, and I'll report on that. The Bridges Library System is looking at Zoom Enterprise license for licenses for libraries, and we could get Zoom with uh, meetings and webinars for up to 500 people for $240 a year if they get enough people to buy into it. Um, and I think I'm going to reproach them tomorrow and talk about, you know, maybe we want to talk about schools or other um, institutions to be included in that. Um, Steve, do you guys have the ability to buy through the state contract on that too? Because I know this yeah. state, I believe, has a Zoom. We don't use Zoom here, but I believe they are in on that too, yeah. potentially. So if we can get a big enough group involved, we, we might be able to get a discount. Otherwise, we don't have Zoom right now, so would I wouldn't pr push that. Would the state be cheaper? It depends. So well, this is with the state. Yeah, it's oh, fun how they're using it through okay. the state type yeah. of thing, so okay. it's funneling itself up on all those types yeah. of products. So. Okay. We're always going to go to the cheapest price we can get. Um, the, the other concern I would have is, does it change the pricing if, if people don't renew year after year? We, we might have some loss there. So. Uh, and if things get back to normal, people might de determine that they don't need Zoom or they might use it a lot and decide that it's worth the $240 a year. So there's a lot of unknowns there. And that's all I was going to add to my report, I think. Okay. Any questions for Steve? One, one comment. Uh, last night at the council meeting, that, I understand the bid board had a meeting down in the recreation center? They did. And they said it was outstanding, and I'll just pass it on. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, I did forget to, to mention that. One of the things that um, I, I, is new is you having the staff do this reporting. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, I found it very informative. I'd like to recommend that you put this on the website every month when they update it you know, like for the teens in the team, and point people to that. Because I, I think this would be real valuable for citizens, council people, just to see what we're actually doing. I mean, we are doing an awful lot yeah. for the community and for all people. Any comments from anybody on, on the documentation that um, the staff said? Any no, questions? It's great. Yeah, I loved it I too. Loved it. And Steve, I love your report too. I really enjoyed the detail that you went into. Thanks. So thank you for yeah. that. Thank you. Some cool things. Yeah. And and when we get to the the money thing, if things don't go the way I recommended it, I'm not going to be hurt. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, number nine, my li library board president's report. Um, my normal. There wasn't anything to, to report. Everything was going well. Number 10, old business. I guess we have no old business. We just cleaned it all up. So that's why Steve is making new business. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we'll move on to number 11. <laughs> I will do that. Okay. Right. It won't be this many next time, though, I'm pretty sure. Um, new business. Uh, number nine, uh, no, number 11A, people counter. This uh, people counter, I, I, I had the uh, links there if you wanted to go look at the SendSource um, tools, but it gives you a heat map 
uh, which is very valuable for us if we're looking at library hours when we're most busy for staffing or any, any other changes we might consider for library hours. It'll tell you when your most busy times are. It might give you a, a time in the middle of the day where, where it's not as busy as the other times. Usually we see a, a, the bulk of our circulate, or people coming through in the middle of the day. Now, I'm under the impression, and I'm not sure that it's true, that this would allow us to also count the rec department separately from people entering the library for library use. And uh, it looks like it can do it, and it's just a, really a, a situation of how high we mount it. And we might run out of room to mount it high enough to, to do that. But, um, but this will give us a really good, accurate count of who's coming to the library, including those who just come in to deposit books in our book drop and walk out, which we don't currently count because we have a beam counter across the gates. So, The current beam counter is built into the, do we pay a fee on that or a, a, is there a fee we, we pay? We do. We pay about 2400 a year, I think, is what so I would, recall. So we for. would then be able to eliminate that? Yes. Okay. That should have been in here. I, yep, your right. it should have point. been in there. <laughs> um, well, it won't, it won't be eliminated for this year. No. I, I don't think, um, my experience with 3M is they don't give you money back. Mm -hmm. They'll credit your account for something in the future. Okay. So, it, so we won't renew it for next year. Would we be removing those? No, those brackets also... Those would stay in They place. would stay because of the books, if you have a book and it dings or something like right. that. Right. But, but the counter piece wouldn't have to be in there. Right. Okay. So you're it's saying it's easier to count too because we can do it online. Oh yeah. The uh, the tool actually uh, there's another piece of software that you'd have to buy if we are under pandemic pro issues again where we have to regulate how many people are in the library. There'd be a small software expense to actually have a visual uh, sign at the door that says this many people are in the building, don't enter, or. Um, we can have two more people enter. We're getting close to that limit mark or whatever. Um, or everything's cool, come on in. There's only 30 people here, whatever the case might be. So, um, and that can be added on. And it's just a matter of switches when, whenever we determine that's necessary. I don't think it's going to be necessary. I'm hoping it's not going to be necessary. And where would you be proposing this fund come from? I would be proposing this comes from... the Technology Support Fund. Which we're sitting at, Technology Support 19 in the city, and 19, uh, actually, uh, 39.5. Yeah. 38.5. 38,500 between the county and the city. Does anybody have any questions, issues? Um, So, you would like a motion to I approve the expenditure of $1,585 for the installation cost and an annual software fee of $180. Correct. I'll make the motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I think it'll end up paying for itself rather fast if we're going to save $2,400 yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. next right. year. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a no-brainer. And it <laughs> obviously expands the capabilities of what you have now, too. Yeah, it's going to look pretty slick, and maybe we can even have our numbers automatically go to the website, so yeah, it keeps track nice. for us. So We'll get Brad on that. We have a motion. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of the motion to spend dollars, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. New Business B, Library Internship Program. Um, we had talked, uh, I had talked to Deb about how we can expand our staff because we, we, um, we are, that is the one area where we are underfunded and we, we don't have the staff to, to meet the needs sometimes. The, Internship would be a way to do that. I'd like to learn more 
and discuss this with some of the powers that be at the city before I take any further action with that. So I want to make that old business for next month, that next meeting, if that's unless somebody has a interest in moving it forward now. I don't. Basically, um, what we we have talked about is the fact that we don't have monies. We do have some money in in our accounts. Okay. If we would bring in an intern, that's not a continuing expense, like an individual <coughs> that we would hire. So it's like a one-time <coughs> expense. Before we would actually um, give, you know, a vote to do that, you would put together what the intern would do and, and explain to us. Yeah. But I guess we just wanted to let the board know that Steve was going to be looking into this as a potential option or something. And again, an intern would most likely be somebody who is in the library science from the university yeah. or something who would like to gain some experience. So it would be non-paid? No, it would be a paid, be a paid. but, yeah. but um, a non, okay, it, is, it won't be a non-recurring expense because it would be an intern for a period of time. And normally in an internship we have a specific project or yeah. something that we want the person to do. So, yeah, I, and I'm looking for feedback from my team to, to figure out exactly what that would be. Uh, so far we've talked about a summer reading program support, somebody who could work with Terika to do the story times through the summer and move, move materials, put together craft kits, those kinds of things. Um, but I don't want to go too far, get too far ahead in the planning until we have the uh, official word from from the people at the city, because I but don't want to... the city really has anything to, unless they would have an, a, they shouldn't really, Yeah. when you read chapter 43, <laughs> you will learn that it is, that, but I think just to yeah. share with the city what, what your plans are and yeah. stuff like that. And I do want to consider any HR issues that could arise from, from having an internship. I don't believe that there are any, but I, I could be wrong. The only thing I could think of might be liability insurance. That's the only thing that might be of some concern, but I don't know what the yeah. extent is, especially if we're paying the individuals. Conversely, and I didn't write it on this report, but since we're talking about the no, I'm not going to talk about it. It's not in the agenda. <laughs> yeah. Caught myself. Yep. Okay. Are there any questions for Steve? And if there are, if you don't ask him now, you're welcome, you know, give him a call or something like that. Brett. And I guess looking at this salary or the cost, the, the money, it, this wouldn't be like a salary position, right? The internship is more like a stipend for... It's uh, a stipend, yeah. Okay, so that it shouldn't fall into anything that the HR would need to do as far as like new employees or count against our employee list, correct? Right. Correct. Okay, so it's mainly I, a... I think the one thing I want to clarify on that, and just with my past experience with internships and apprenticeships is, A, how are you paying? Does the stipend cover you for things like, you know, depending upon how many hours they work in terms of retirement systems, what other benefits come with that based upon what the city has set up? Um, and then I just think some of those requirements, the more you can treat them like a regular employee for onboarding, the more, maybe the less issues you may have through the term of your internship. Yeah. Um, and just that ability to take potentially that college kid who's going into education that they can actually tie their hours to a potential requirement for credit for class at the university at the same time. Yeah. Um, and so I just, That's I think those question. are some options there, but just all those little questions, just going through that here of just making sure what are those little pieces for HR and what is that hour, number of hours work that triggers X, Y, Z in HR for them to have to now add this mm -hmm. five cents an hour thing on it. Or right. It so yeah, I think it's a good idea. All right. Thank you. Thank you. New business number C, summer reading program. Uh, this I would be looking to pay for out of the strategic plan. Um, the sign cost seemed, uh, well, it, it was, it's a little shocking to see the, the cost of, of what, 1,150 signs, it was for me anyway, maybe it's not for everybody, uh, would cost. There's two companies in West Bend that would be able to provide those signs and there was a 15 cent difference between them. 
And I would imagine that this would be something that we would continue from year to year. I would hope that this would not be a recurring expense for the library board, um, hoping that the friends could help with this in the future if we, if we have an active friends group. Um, but it could be evaluated each year as well. It doesn't, you know, it's not a, a binding thing. So we're talking about this year, um, designing some signs to say, um, home of a super reader from West Bend Library, or what was the exact word that I got from Terica? Uh, library champion, actually, it was. So I thought that's pretty, pretty good for us as far as an overall message that we want to get out there. So people will see these signs all over West Bend. These signs be used multiple years, or is this a? Is they could once once they get it, earn it through their prize for summer reading. They, it's their sign. Oh, so the kids get it. So yeah, the kids okay. get it. Okay. Or the adults, if they okay. chose choose to do that. And um, so they could get a, a new one each year, I guess, if we redesign the sign. Okay. Um, but I would imagine they'd want to use the same one each year and then get other prizes. <laughs> so. Okay. And that 1,150 is a realistic number of signs that people participate in the summer reading program? Yeah, that's 150 adults potentially that would uh, participate out of 300 participants for okay. a summer reading program. And Terika determined 1,000 would for okay. the kids. Thank you. So. Brett? Steve? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, just from personal experience, you know, a, a politician running for election, you know, we, we spend money on signs, yard signs and stuff, so uh, I feel your pain. Uh, especially local, you know, when you're trying to trying to stay local and uh, do business here with your own community and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, internet and online sales are are killing that, killing these people. So I would just say, you know, yes, it's good to look for uh, economy and in some things, you know, maybe online kind of uh, printing and stuff like that. But uh, again, I guess it'll be a board decision if you stay local and uh, obviously you want to support local. Okay, but you know, looking at the looking at the costs, you might want to keep that in mind as far as going outside of that. Because I don't know, the school district has signs, correct, for you know, like a, sw a swimmer. Yeah, and a lot of those are run through, I believe, our booster club or something. Okay. So it's not necessarily us. We did do something for seniors last year, but okay. I feel like there too, it was the family buying it, not necessarily us buying it and putting okay. it in. Um, but yeah, I, I know there's also online opportunities versus the local piece, and I don't know the price difference. I haven't looked at it. It was, it was, it was, it was quite it was, a bit. Trust me. saved a lot of money going online, but yeah. there is something to support local business. Correct. Right. One of the things that, that I've done in the past working with, uh, actually, Vacation Bible School with the church, is they had a sign that they came up with that was good for like several years. And then what they did is each year they still had the base sign and just added a component to it, whether it be... So a sticker, sticker or, of some sort. or um, a decal or, well, or something. So yeah, that might be something idea. to consider. You know, you could plan for for the future and still, you know, have the base sign that they could get every year. But then, and not have it tied to years, just you know, mm -hmm. year two or, or that's what's added this year. I like that idea. You can save yeah. money in the future. Yeah. Maybe then you could put the year on that. Yeah. Right. On, on the decal. Or whatever. Right. On the yeah. decal. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the state park sticker. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe it could be so the theme because you have a different theme each year, right? Yep. So maybe that decal could just go around the theme and then the year and that just add to the, the baseline. Yeah. Just about. That's pretty smart. I like that idea. Okay. You are looking for a motion. Yep. And the total oh. with the t shirts, I should say that the t shirts we always go with a local vendor and the staff t shirts would be less than $300 is what she said, but I wanted to make sure there was enough buffer there in case we prices changed this year. Um, a lot of times we are still going to be getting um, stuff for summer reading like prizes and that through our sponsors. Our, right. Okay, so this yep. would be in addition to that. Yeah. Okay. Steve is looking for a motion to 
authorize, and you said this was out of the strategic plan you'd like to that's, that's what I was going to propose that we take that out of. Okay. I'll make the motion that we approve the $7,281.50 for the incentives and t-shirts. Do we have a second? Uh -huh. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of appropriating the funds for the summer reading program, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I actually think this is a good use of funds this year because last year was just such a horrible year, and I think this might be something for the the kids really got hurt this year. We have yeah, we have a really, really good summer reading program. I would hate to see it yeah. decrease yeah, we, we or decline in any way, shape, or form. So this is cool. I like this idea. Okay. Wow, you're two for two. Two for two. <laughs> two for two. <laughs> okay, we'll see if it continues. Number um, <laughs> D. Chamber leadership course. I had asked that um, Steve to put this on the West Bend. <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> the West Bend leadership class is going to be starting again in September. We, um, in the past, Amy has gone to that and Brad has gone to that. I think it's a good program for Steve to get involved in, to get a little bit more exposure to the community and the things going on. Not that you're not getting exposed now and, and, and stuff, but um, we also are supporting the program. So I am asking that we um, authorize the spending for the, the leadership and it's about, eight, it's in the past it was $800 because we are a member of the the chamber, it's a little more if, if, if you would not be. So I am asking that we approve training. Now, how much do we have in our training budget? Um, in your training budget? Not much. No. <laughs> to be honest, uh, oh, I have my whole budget binder here. Let me just grab that. The training falls under director's discretion, I believe. Yes. And that is. I think it's like two two thousand less than that. Yeah, it's 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 around the two thousand mark, and it's it's going pretty fast. Um, and and I'm just asking the board if you know I think it's a valuable um, piece, but I wanted the board to um, um, do that. I would think that also would come out of the. One of the things that I was thinking, if we had funds from last year that we would be transferring over, I would, and I don't know what it is because we don't have the total dollar amount from the city, but my thinking is every year the city has a tax levy for the library and we take in this money. The citizens have paid this tax to be spent in that year. And what I'm actually going to be looking for next next year is the potent or next month is to say instead of if we have fifty thousand dollars instead of moving that into a fund balance, saying let's spend some of that this year because the citizens gave us that money last year and we really didn't reach what we thought. So what I would recommend is if there is money from the uh, 2020 leftover, we would move some of that money into the training budget for this. Okay. So we. Um, so that would be the operating expense fund, correct? That would be out of the operating ex the the fund 21 or fund 26. It could come out of either the county if there's money left over from the county, and I think we're sitting on about 30000 from the county, but we're not 100% sure of that. So there is money we will be moving into the fund balance. And I do not want to decrease our fund, how can I say this? I don't want, I don't want to have the board look like we're just spending funds, but right now we are trying to build up our library and get back 
what we may have lost during COVID. And I think this would be an excellent way to, to get Steve a little bit more acclimated to the community. Networking, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so is this, um, so it's a two-day retreat, and then basically one day monthly? Pretty, pretty close pretty, to that, yeah. Pretty close to that? Yeah. Have you done anything like this in the past, Steve? Trainings like this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, actually, this is very much like Wood Badge when, for scouting, where we had a, actually a couple two-day retreats. We had a big project we had to do together and, and then uh, had classes in between. So it's very similar to that. Brand can speak to this, too, because you've had the training. Um, yeah, basically what the, the two-day retreat is just to get you acclimated. It's a very small class. I think it's no more than 16 persons, something like that. And what happens is you, you kind of get to know each other, get the bonding thing going, because then you're broken up into teams for various things. And in our case, we're broken into two sets of teams with different partners in each group. One for competitions on each month that we had something, but another one that was part of the project. And in the group I was with for the project, we worked with uh, we worked with non props, and my group worked with the symphony, the Marine Symphony, and so we worked with them for a nine month scenario, and we're actually uh, part of their board. There were three of us on their board, and uh, we were there for a, for the nine months, and then we presented. And then what happens is that after the two-day retreat, every month or I think it's nine months up to until through April, there's a different theme. You have environmental, you have safe public safety, you have health, you have education, all these different areas, and you go to all these different places attuned to those pieces, and you know you make your contacts with other individuals. And, and I've gotten quite a few number of contacts out of this, which is really great, because I think I'll be able to work with them on their behalf and on the library's behalf going forward in some cases. It is actually a lot of fun. I do get to see a lot of different areas that you never would see before. I mean, in one case, we get to see the, uh, the county jail. Not just from the outside, we get to see the county jail from the inside. Okay, It is fascinating. It's absolutely a fascinating uh, way to look at how things actually work in that respect. But then you give a project at the end, you have a presentation, and there's a word ceremony in the whole nine yards. So I, I can't speak uh, more for it. I think it's great. I think it's a great program. So. We were talking about the networking that Brad's done and taking some of the knowledge that he's gained as a template for us to do some of our projects that are similar already. Um, and I think the city is very big into this. I know Jay has gone to this and... A, a lot of people in the city have. A lot of, a lot of the department sends, uh, you know, like up-and-coming leaders uh, to do that. So if you're like on a, on a promotion list or something, you know, you, you get uh, the ability to join in. So, and, and I've seen it with different, different departments throughout the, okay. throughout the city. So yeah, we, have, we have staff who've gone through it here, and then I've given tours when they've come in here because there's an education day and so forth, and it, they find it very valuable. Um, it's the connection piece, it's the understanding what's really in the community, what's really there, so you can make your ties. If we're doing this at the library, how does that tie to not only the, the public sector here, but the private sector, and who are those people and all that. So I think it's a great idea. Any other questions? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Motion to approve. <laughs> second. Okay, I'll second. second. Since I went to a chamber function Friday morning at the old theater, and we got to go up on stage. Oh, cool. And my partner and I, he was, we were called Pat and Van. I was modeling the West Bend's band jacket, and he's giving oh. our little spiel. Oh. So we're members, of, the band is members of the chamber. So. so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, number E, Kiwani's corporate membership. Out of my screen. There we go. Did that not make my report, or is it here? <laughs> I may have combined. I it. read some. <laughs> it's it's, it's it in your report. report. Yeah, it in it's just above where <laughs> the leadership West Bend program is. Sure. Okay. So yeah, um, the the early risers have been good to us. They wanted us to join, and and I thought it would be good to have an option to have. To send Brad, because he's up early anyway, <laughs> to have breakfast with them or, or any of the staff 
the library mm -hmm. staff. Their reports are a lot more fun to read and, and to, you know, when, when they get up and talk about what's going on in the youth department or the teen department, they're a little bit more engaging than I am. I'm, I'm, I can talk about the generalities, but I don't know the details and I don't get as excited about youth programs as I used to. Um, I think they're great. But um, Terika is much, probably, probably much better at talking about youth programs. So um, That's why I thought the, the corporate membership would, would be a good tool for us. This year it's pretty cheap because we're, they're paying for meals as they go, so it's only a $50 per quarter fee, and then the regular dues are $360. But I think the library having a corporate membership would be a, a good um, fit for them and for us. Oh, what you're saying, okay, for the rest of the year it's only $50 per uh, quarter. Per quarter, and yeah. then uh, on an ongoing basis it and would be And it looks like we'd be starting in the second or the third quarter right now when I'd send my membership application in June. I do know the, the Kiwanis um, has been very, very good. I mean, they sponsor most of the children's programs yeah. on a monthly basis. I think they yeah. want yeah. at least one a month. And the Kiwanis Early Risers, along with the noon, were a big supporter of the basement. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 So, um, and they're looking to give us more money. We just have to show up to a meeting, I think, and get a check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is, we're so, not, yes. Yeah. For, for some of our programs, they were going to cool. okay. designate some more funds for us. So does anyone have any questions? I hate to say things. This, this has been a meeting where we are um, appropriating funds, which we normally don't do. It. But sometimes when we appropriate them, in the past, they've been for huge dollars, yeah. like elevators and ceiling sprinklers. So these are all, all a little bit. Where would this money come from? You know, I'd take that out of strategic plan. That seems like a strategic plan item. Okay. I'll yeah. make the motion to approve it. Joanne? Yeah, I'll with the sales pitch like we've got <laughs> here on the <laughs> I'll second. Joe, Um any further discussion? No. Steve, can I ask a long-term question for some of these? So we talked sure. about like our training budget. We talked about some of these different connection pieces and maybe leadership West Bend isn't just you in the future. Maybe it's one of your other library and leaders. Yeah. Do you see these things built into your regular budget in future years besides just that professional development training aspect? Yeah, I think I think it's some, something that definitely should be considered for that. The regular budget, it should be in there. Um, but... It, it looked a little light, and I'd, I'd like to see an opportunity for more of the staff to get to conferences and maybe bigger conferences. It's great to go to WLA every year, and that's one of my things is I actually I alternate WLA and WAPL is what I typically do. One year I go to one, and one year I go to the other. Um, but there are staff members that would benefit from going to those conferences as well. That um, I've been to enough that I kind of know what they're going to talk about already. It's great for me to see old friends and to do some networking, and sometimes I get some good ideas out of it, but uh, it would be really great for our frontline staff or, or our librarians to get out there. So basically what Tim is saying, this is the last time you can come to the well for the money. Well, I, just, <laughs> I, don't, I, would, I wouldn't say that, but I like the idea of yes. talking about this being Take your mind, but we're drawing a line. Yeah. We've talked, we talked actively about providing professional development right. for our staff. And it just hasn't really come to fruition over the last yeah. few years. And so the idea that there's leadership training and there's all these things, it's beyond you as the director who can take advantage of this and make our library even stronger. Yeah. So that, that's why I'm bringing it up is we're making a commitment in the people that we have working in our library to attend these types of events. And so yeah. I think that's good to put forward for our staff. And, and if the budget were not to come together as, as I would like in the future, these might be expenses that we have to go back to the, the fund balance for. To, to, to cover, I'd, re I'd prefer that it comes as a, a budgeted item in the future for 2022 and moving forward, but we, we don't know what to expect from the city and the county yet, so. Brett? Well, just one little comment that is, you know what, there are people that are watching us and they do watch how we use the purse strings. And yeah. I, I see it at the council and mm -hmm. I'm just echoing it here. There are people that watch and, you know, they see what we do and as long as we're doing things reasonably and uh, with good intentions and all that, uh, they're usually not a problem, okay? 
So it's like Deb said, you know, if we start spending willy-nilly kind of thing or spending money just for the sake of spending, then we're going to draw some attention and some people may take notice. So if we're doing things correctly and doing it for the right reasons and, uh, and being reasonable about it, there shouldn't be a problem. Thank so. you. Thanks. Okay. Did we have a motion? Yes. 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 Joanne and Josh. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All in favor of um, joining the Kiwanis at a corporate membership level, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. New business, bonding of the board treasurer. Joseph, you've been so quiet. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a bill here for $234 for the bond for the treasurer, which is nothing too exciting. Um, I did want to note that it only has a coverage amount of $50,000, which I thought seemed a little low for the amount of funds that we have. Um, the person from the insurance company said that they didn't really think it was too big of a deal because the, the likelihood of $50,000 disappearing in one month is pretty small. Most of the time when people steal money from an organization, they tend to pocket 50 bucks here, 50 bucks there. But at the same time, I've, I'm pretty sure somewhere, that I feel like, Deb, I mentioned it to you at one point, that I feel like there's a statute that says I'm supposed to have it up to the amount of the funds that I have available to me. So I, that's going... Yeah, that's correct. It's actually... In Chapter 43. Yeah, and so... <laughs> Joanne's so, our expert. Wow. Yeah. So... Um, I, that would be, what, 80000 Because you Roughly, have, yeah, it do, was... Do you think we should go up to, like, 100000 in the event? These are ready funds, you know, like funds that are in the money market, not in the fund I mean, we're, we're probably closer to 120 than 100 because we've we? got the 43 in the money market. And then thirty thousand in both of the checking accounts. Conversely, we could spend more money next time. Well, <laughs> right. <laughs> but I just thought it would, we should probably update that dollar amount when I was talking to them, and the guy was like, "Well, you probably don't need to." But I was like, "Oh, well, well, I'll talk to the board and we'll get back to you." <laughs> if we have to, by the state statute, we have to make right. cover. Right, and so I mean, yeah, yeah. And then what happens with once we get the friends group up and running and we're taking in funds from that? The friends will manage their own funds. They will yeah. do their own. Yeah. Okay. It'll be a completely yep. separate entity. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They'd probably want their own insurance. See, if you add on to your, on. if you add on to your house, we'll notice. It. Right. <laughs> 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 well, well the, the neat thing about. Uh, the, the current situation is we get this every month, we get the report, you can see what's added. Mm -hmm. We know what's going to be taken out of that, so, right. so it's pretty obvious if there's anything else that's changed. Right. So there's... When, when we see that check that says patio installation. Okay, now we have a bill for 234000 I think we should approve that because yeah. I think that, that bill is due. That bill is due like May, something early in May. Okay. So that should probably just get paid and then the discussion should be started to increase it. To, I mean, yeah. we, we can even authorize it to be increased and then they can just bill us for the difference. Then right. this will be yeah. another agenda item we don't have to deal with. Yes. Okay. Guilty. So report on it. Yeah. Per state statute. Joanne, it should be covered up to the amount. So you're saying, Joseph, about 125, you know, give or take. Yeah, that's probably a good amount because, yeah, that would make sense. That would, then we'd technically be a little over, which is better than being under. Yeah, under. So, okay. Do, um, I'd like to call for a motion to approve payment of the $234. Where would this be coming out of, Joseph? Probably the, one of the, well, it's $234 less than you're responsible for. <laughs> All right. There you go. <laughs> Already yeah. making headway. Yeah. I, I was probably just going to go with the unrestricted checkbook. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> and this is a standard thing every year we yeah. do pay this, so it's mm -hmm. not like it's it's something un unusual. So I'd like to ask for a motion to approve paying the hundred the two hundred and thirty four dollars to provide the bond for our treasurer and then for our treasurer to speak with the insurance company to bring that bonding up to uh, 125, 130? 125 would 125. be. 125. Yeah. I'll make the motion to pay the $234 for the bonded and give you the option to discuss getting us to where we need to be. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Our next meeting will be May 18th at City Hall. That is the meeting where we elect officers, so if anybody is interested in any of the positions, please feel free to let me know and I will put that on. I mean, okay. Assigned tasks. Yes. Yes. You board members have all those assigned tests. That's to true. Okay, all right. Down. Down. You're right, they all have both. And Joseph has the task of doing the, yes. the insurance. Yes. Okay, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Good meeting. Very good meeting. Thank you much. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.